Hey guys, in this video I'm going to do something a little bit different that I haven't actually covered in a while, but I have been asked here in, a, I think a few weeks ago, some people were asking for um, work from home jobs related to writing articles and different types of writing jobs you can do either on the side or full time, kind of as a freelancer. And I'm going to show you some of the best websites where you can get paid around $200 or more for every submission. So some of the higher paying sites out there if you're trying to do some articles online. So the first website we're looking at is called longreads.com. Now longreads is basically dedicated, as you can see, to publishing and sharing the best long form nonfiction storytelling on the web. So they typically pay around $250 for 1000 word articles and $500 for longer ones, or at least that's what they used to pay. So if you scroll down here, it seems they do have that same rate still. And basically they want original work and pay competitive rates. They're not accepting any fiction at this time. They're a small team and receive many pitches and submissions each day. They only respond if they are interested in publishing your piece. So we, res we strongly recommend submitting simultaneously to other publications. So if you don't get a response from them, that doesn't mean they haven't seen it. It may mean that they just choose to go in a different direction. They will not accept any submission or pitch that has been written or edited using generative AI tools such as ChatGPT. Now, there are some tools out there that will basically um, tell you if something was written or likely written by AI. So yes, they can actually check that. Um, there may be some ways around that. There are YouTube videos that tell you kind of ways around that, but um, typically, if you're trying to write an article for someone else's website, a lot of times they don't want AI right now. So they say essays and columns typically run between 2,000 and 6,000 words. Pieces may be longer or broken up into a series depending on the length and subject matter. And personal essays should be submitted on spec and they pay $500 per essay. They look for smart, original angles and fresh, unique voices. And then here's some of the favorites. So here's like an example here out there on not finishing so you see like these different uh, types of articles i recommend no matter where you are checking make sure you look at the format you'll notice some like quotes throughout here and how long these posts typically are how they're written you want to always check what these look like and if the blog or website is still actively posting and i tried to include only the ones that are still active because it's been a while since i've covered some of these sites but they also have reading lists as well. They seek writers who are interested in exploring topics through curated reading lists. A reading list typically includes an essay style introduction followed by a collection of links to long form stories and sometimes books and other resources related to the theme. They pay $350 per reading list. So then they'll tell you how to submit and everything. Next we have a company, if you're good with Photoshop, they have photoshoptutorials.com. WS. So make sure you get the website right. Again, it's photoshoptutorials.ws. Now you do see that the um, submissions page here was published in 2014. So you might be like, oh, well, are they still actually, you know, posting? And if you look at their website here, you will notice that yes, they are in fact publishing still. This one was actually published today as of me recording this. And so you're looking for these blogs, make sure they are actively posting still and this one in fact is. So they want to share your tutorial with their readers if it's good obviously and it's related to helping people do Photoshop better. Here's your chance to promote yourself while educating thousands of Photoshop users. So some of these articles, not only do they pay you but they help you kind of build a little bit of a following online. You can also earn $50 for quick tips or up to $300 for your full tutorial. Starting is easy and you don't even need to have your tutorial ready. Just fill the form below with a picture of your tutorial's final result and we'll let you know if it qualifies. So that's really nice because you don't have to actually finish it first. You don't have to put a, a ton of work in. You can actually kind of show them the end result and then if they like the end result, then you can go through and create the full article. So that you're, they're not gonna make you waste a bunch of time and then you end up not even getting accepted. So you can also earn 25 to $50 for different articles and roundups as well if you wanna do that. But obviously the tutorials for Photoshop pay by far the most at 150 to $300 each. 
Next, we have International Living. Now, I believe International Living actually bought the rights to a few other sites that were kind of similar. Like, there was one, there's another travel related blog. I, I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but it basically was kind of similar to this one. I believe it was the Travel Writer's Life. And at the Travel Writer's Life, they had, you know, different articles about traveling the world, but International Living. It was another, it was a separate website at the time. Now they seem to have merged because when you click on a link to Travel Writer's Life, it goes here as well. So here you can basically write articles on retiring overseas. You may see articles, you know, online about all oh, the top 10 places to retire. And a lot of times you'll see foreign countries. Like for instance, you might see like Costa Rica or you might see, you know, like Panama or these different countries, maybe in Central America or Europe or, you know, all sorts of different places around the world instead of just, oh, like, like if you're located in the U.S. and just giving you different towns or U.S. states, they'll go all over the world. So they literally have a blog dedicated to that at internationalliving.com and you can actually still submit articles here. Now, when it comes to submitting articles here, they want to they want you to have lived outside of your country that you were originally born in like the US for instance and you could make money writing about that here. So they want you to typically talk about your own experiences and not just, you know, hypothetical type stuff or research related posts. So here they basically tell you that people want to live overseas either part-time or full-time and most of them want to learn about ways to stretch the dollars and simplify their lives. So in other words, how can you save money while also doing that? So these stories are meant to inspire these. This could be your story or that of someone you interview. It's a profile of an individual or couple living the dream. So you can actually interview people as well. They're also interested in healthcare and things like that. Like sometimes when you move overseas, you might save money, but they may not have the same infrastructure or you know government level that you have, say, in the United States. And so you need to address practical things like that, and not just like oh, saving money on your housing and that's it. You know, that type of thing is very important to their readers. They have a few notes for you as well. They are not a travel magazine make recommendations in your article they want your opinion this is the age of the internet but before you get mired in the online research remember readers can google too so original tips and advice that maybe you can't just you know you don't want to just post basic stuff that people can enter that people can google themselves never never start a story from the beginning if you are writing someone's profile use lots of direct quotes from them if you did like an interview don't be boring they also want it usually to be around uh, 850 to 1600 words. So that's obviously one thing you have to look at with pretty much any kind of submission here. Now they don't give you, it looks like the straight up um, number for how much they pay per article. But from my research in the past, they were around that $200 mark or more. So they should still be around that level hopefully if you are able to get publicized here. Now also we have a company called Cracked. Cracked is a company where you can get paid to write about comedic subjects. You can make some extra money here by basically writing comedy and comedic subjects, things that are funny, etc. So go to cracked.com and make sure you find this page here, which I'll have direct links to all of these submission pages because sometimes they don't have a direct link to it on their website. Sometimes it's hard to find. So they will pay you to write things for us even if you have never written anything for anybody before. All you have to do is reply to the thread. There are no requirements or fees or anything else ever. So they have a, uh, a thread here. We want you to make comedy for Cracked. So when you click on that link, you'll just go to that. And then this page right here is basically just telling you like, okay, these are some of the rules. These are some of the things we're looking for. They say they're, they're following is around 3 million people as well so this could end up generating some traffic for your own website or your own profiles on social media as well so it's not just about the pay itself sometimes now they tell you right here what does it pay full length feature articles start at $100 each and after you fourth uh, published article you get bumped up to the veteran pay of $200 if your article is among the 10 most popular that month you get a $50 bonus. The quick fixes they mentioned earlier, since they're only a fraction of the size of that other stuff, pay at $50 a shot. So 
you turn in the finished article, you get paid by PayPal. There's no waiting for months to get a check as well. So that's also nice that they pay you via PayPal. Now, I don't see a lot about like the length that it has to be or anything like that. They don't really have a breakdown of just the, uh, the numbers, but essentially you do not have to have experience. You just kind of need to be funny. And basically they have all sorts of different things on here. They have uh, quick insights into current events, pop culture, comics, video reviews, and more. So you have all sorts of different things that you can publish here and get paid up to two hundred dollars, maybe more, two hundred fifty if it's a you know if it's one that does really well and is one of the most popular that month for every article that you get published here. If you stick around and you publish more than one, next you have a few different websites that are all kind of grouped together so i'm going to go through three of these that are very similar to each other they're kind of like um, a section of a brand but they're still technically separate pages and parts of a a website so they have one section of this website which is tutsplus.com where basically you can write all sorts of coding tutorials so this is at code.tutsplus.com and with this one, you can get paid very well to basically write tutorials related to PHP, Ruby, server-side JavaScript, HTML, CSS3, document-based database systems, and everything in between. And essentially, this is a place where you can get paid, usually rates start at $100 for a quick tip, and then $250 per regular tutorial. And again, they have some people that bill them 700 plus per month for publishing high quality tutorials several times per month. So you're not just doing only, you know, one a month or you're not limited to just doing one a year or something like that. It seems like you can do multiple tutorials per month as long as they're good. They will allow you to keep publishing um, pretty often. So this is a place, again, you can do all sorts of different tutorials. Some of the benefits include writing about a topic and educating others about that topic that you're specifically interested in or you have skills in. So you're kind of teaching them something. You're getting your name out there in a, a community that's geared towards that. You're an established developer or consultant and are looking to diversify your platform while expanding your writing skills. So if you are especially something like this, um, in terms of your expertise, that would be very helpful. Establish yourself as an expert in your given field, of course. So even if you aren't, they say you can establish yourself. And so maybe if you are good at coding, but you aren't someone who has a big following yet, they will still accept articles and code tutorials from you. Now they have another part called Get Paid for Writing Vector Tuts Plus. So Vector Tuts Plus is actually a separate part of the same company, but it's, you know, it's kind of like a sub domain of the same company. So it's at design.tutsplus.com. So here they're looking for content on vectors Tuts Plus, focusing on vector applications such as Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, SketchUp, and Inkscape. They want more of this. So they're expanding into other content areas and have a healthy budget on commissioning quality content from the right people. And they're looking for people who know a lot about Adobe Illustrator, you know, InDesign, Inks, Inkscape, SketchUp, Coral Draw, typography focused content. Those are the types of things they're looking for. So in addition to vector-based content, they also want to focus on drawing tutorials. This is an area we want to bring more focus to and help teach other, um, there are thousands of readers about. So here they talk about how the pay is pretty much the same. So they have, you know, they have some people who get billed, you know, they bill like 700 a month, around 8,400 a year, pretty consistently. So they seem to have a really big budget for these. And they don't seem to have like a specific amount of words that you have to have included in these tutorials. And then last but not least, we have their WordPress section, which is at code.tutsplus.com, where you can write for WP Tuts Plus. So this one, if you are an expert on WordPress and creating websites with WordPress in some way, then they're interested in talking to you and looking for some good content in that area. So they are in need of a few new terrific authors to help publish content on WP Tuts Plus for at least one to four times per month. So you can get paid as often as maybe once per week. What they're looking for is when it comes to sharing articles and tutorials, they want people who build things using WordPress regardless of how many years you've been doing it. So that's nice as well. They tell you that, you know, 
you can be someone who is skilled but maybe not super experienced and still be okay publishing here if your stuff is good. They're looking for people who have something interesting, useful, or practical to share with the audience. Again, pretty much anything related to WordPress. Um, their requirements here are knowledge and high quality, excellent writing skills, and consistency. So as far as the pay for this one, the 150 per tutorial for the first month, 175 per tutorial for the second month, and after six months, $60 per quick tip, 300 to 500 for premium level tutorials, and screencasts. So you can literally get paid up to 500 for each one. And assuming you submit an article a week and one large tutorial or screencast per month, you can expect to make between $1,200 each month. So it's not something you want to live on, but it's something that could be a really nice supplement to your income or one of the many sites that maybe you build a relationship with. So they have all sorts of things like different WordPress levels, uh, specific tutorials, favorite code snippets, theme development, plugin development, in-depth standards, best practices, WordPress culture type articles, etc. So this is another area you can focus on as well with the same kind of, kind of parent company or brand but different sections where you can get paid to write articles at different rates for different audiences that focus on a specific type of code, websites, etc. Next, we have a company called SitePoint. SitePoint.com is a website you can get paid to write about HTML, CSS, and SAAS, or SASS, SAS, whatever that is. I'm not even sure what that is. I know what HTML is, but um, and I know what CSS is, but as far as a place where you can get paid to write about code, now typically HTML and CSS have, have to do with websites. So basically it's the type of code you use to edit or build websites. So if you're at all experienced with any of these things, you can write tutorials and articles about these. So CSS, for instance, is a constantly hot topic in their community at sitepoint.com. So they'll always consider a CSS article or tutorial idea. They like demos. They like that um, you have a good handle on the subject from a standards browser compatibility standpoint, coverage of a popular CSS framework tool or library, those types of things. And when, you, when it comes to HTML, it's another good topic that does very well with their audience. You could write about things like a new tag or set of tags that aren't as well known, accessibility and how it relates to HTML tags or attributes, and one of the HTML5 APIs or something like that. And then you can rock you can basically cover SaaS, which is probably one of the fastest growing topics right now for them. For many developers, SaaS has become the new CSS, so traffic for SaaS content is constantly on the rise. Maybe that's why I don't know about it, because I'm, I'm used to CSS. But you can write something about uh, that beginners would benefit from and pick a single feature in SaaS and break it down, showing all parts of the syntax and list and discuss some useful SaaS tools or dissect a single tool and tell us how it is so now they'll have some examples here as well and then you obviously you want to check the website and see what they've been pub publishing lately but obviously they want you to have good english skills and outside of that they don't seem to list their payment here but my past research has shown that they could be in that 200 dollars per out to 200 dollars per article mark or so and as you can see they are actively publishing still all throughout you know January. Next you have WP Hub. So this is obviously a place where you can get paid to write about WordPress. Now the reason I'm on the contact us page is because that's where they take you when it comes to the write for us section. So they used to have a different submissions page. Now they just tell you to contact them directly. So what you would want to do is just kind of pitch your article or your tutorial for WordPress. You would want to go through their guides here, go through some of their tutorials, and their different type of, of written content and then you can pitch them by basically you know talking to them through the contact page so you see they have a contact page here when you go to write for us it basically redirects you to their contact page so they do have a write for us section which tells me they are still accepting submissions but you're just going to have to pitch it to them through this contact page unfortunately they don't have the specifics about these anymore but they are still an active website and from my past research basically you write about any WordPress related topics especially if they're tutorials or guides or WordPress for beginners those obviously are the three main areas of um, like blog posts that you could do here 
in the past they would pay 100 to 200 dollars per article and they do usually allow you to have an author page or box but no links so if you're trying to get backlinks it's not going to probably work here now you also have the new york times now new york times actually has a section here where it's called uh, modern love essays and they obviously want me to create an account to actually access this page which i don't really have the biggest reason to do but with new york times i can tell you some of my notes from them they have this modern love section it has been rumored that you can get paid 200 dollars or so per 1500 to 1700 word guest post and you can both have an author box or page as well as links now i don't know if those are do follow links like actual backlinks to where um, you're getting a if you actually could get a do follow link from the new york times obviously that's that's a huge signal to google for seo purposes that could really help your website but even if it's just a basic no follow link that goes to your social media profiles or something getting posted on the new york times can be a big deal so you know they have this section here where you can apply for modern love if you're someone who likes writing about something related to that you can create an account and do some submissions here at new york times next we have a website called nitty which as you can see is k-n-i-t-t-y dot com basically if you're into knitting so it's a very small niche type of thing i know most of you probably don't um, have any kind of knitting skills or any reason to do knitting but here you can actually get paid to still submit articles to their company so at nitty they've been around since 2002 so they've been a long running blog here and it's a very niche website so sometimes that's the best way to go but they have the version of their style guide here you need to download to help you get published to make sure everything looks the way it's supposed to on their blog and they are basically looking for people and they are accepting knitting and crotchet including tunisian crotchet designs and are happy to see designs that incorporate multiple techniques they moved the top end of what we can pay to 300 dollars from 200 dollars. so they used to be 200 dollars in the past now they've actually moved up some companies are moving down or removing their submissions page altogether while they are actually moving up in how much they are willing to pay you so that's a nice thing to see as well and then what do you pay for submissions obviously like i said they already sh kind of show you that so anything related to like knitting is essentially what you can write for them they don't seem to give you a specific uh word count that i can see here um, they tell you what they pay pattern tech edited or test knit they'll give you obviously the uh specifics about what types of knitting they want you to talk about i'm not going to get too detailed into this because i know this will probably bore most people to death but the copyright will be um, you the creator of the work will retain all copyrights to your own work by submitting work to be published in nitty and accepting the honorarium you are giving your permission for your pattern or article and all related images to be included in their magazine so you still keep the copyright as well which is also a good thing to know that some companies don't really tell you whether or not you still get that but as far as you know how long it has to be i don't really see a specific word count on here but when it comes to you know this very specific niche that's pretty high paying 300 dollars per article now you also have a company called iworkwell.com and where you can showcase your expertise which has to do with human resource professionals from large companies so if you've ever been a human resource professional or you have some sort of experience related to that or expertise in that area typically they are known for paying around 200 dollars per article and they still do so to this day so they do compensate reviewers and article articles um, and authors unlike most publications which don't you want to keep your day job you're not going to get rich writing articles for us but assuming you do a great job and on time you can earn over 200 dollars per article so it could actually go above that as well article assignments are case by case subject to your interest and availability there's no minimum commitment that's also nice you get maximum freedom here they have over a thousand clients around the country your work will reach a large and growing audience as well and again they don't seem to tell you like a word count for this company either but just knowing that you can get 200 dollars or more per article here basically talking about human resources uh, pr marketing all that stuff 
you can uh, you can check out iworkwell.com. You also have a company called Bee Culture, which is a magazine of, as you can see, American beekeeping. Another very small niche type of article um, submissions page where you can get paid um, to get published with articles about beekeeping. So as you can see, I think you realize that the trend with this video is there are all sorts of niches out there. So look up like a like you could google like write for us and then put your niche in there what you do for a hobby what you do for a living something like that that you know a lot about and try and write for all sorts of companies compile a list in that niche and then basically try and submit articles to them so i'm just kind of showing you what's possible right now but at b culture for instance you can you can write here typically they want 1000 to 2000 words per article and with over 100 pages for most issues, they generally run 15 to 16 articles. So it looks like it might actually be a magazine instead of just blog posts. So they basically cover beekeeping, its history, how to do everything beekeeping covers, equipment, and uh, humorous side of the craft as well. So, but there's much more to the world like pollination, honey plants, gardening with bees, wildlife, and woodland plantings and all the creatures that bees affect and interact with. So they go a wide range with this, all related to, of course, beekeeping. But um, they say proposals should be 200 words or less with one or two photos for demonstration if you think you ne they are needed all via email. So when it comes to the actual final product, though, it looks like um, each one is 1,000 to 2,000 words in their magazine. Now, as far as how much they pay, they do tell you down here under payment that unsolicited regular uh, or feature articles between 1,500 and 2,000 words pay roughly 150 to $200, including photos, um, which could be more on negotiation. Payment is usually made on publication. They do not make reprints, but will provide issues of the magazine the article appears in. Articles that are solicited by the editor usually pay more depending on difficulty in editing required. And then cover photos are paid $50 for one-time use. They also mentioned they pride themselves on, on working with both new and inexperienced writers. So you do not have to be someone who's like, you know, a, a niche influencer in beekeeping or anything. Next you have backwoodshome.com. And this page, when I first saw this page, you know, I hadn't checked this website in a long time, but they look like it's kind of an older website. But when you actually go to their when you actually go to their full website, it looks just fine. It looks like a modern blog and they are still actively posting, it looks like. So this is a website where if you're looking for, you know, something where you can post, this is another company that should pay you a decent rate here. They tell you that they pay forty to two hundred dollars per article paid upon acceptance. So another nice thing about being paid on acceptance, you shouldn't have to wait till it's actually published. So what they are is a country and self-reliance oriented how-to magazine that specializes in showing people how to build their own home, produce independent energy, grow their own food, and how to make a living without being tied to a city. They also cover related subjects such as health, raising animals, food preservation, country skills, homeschooling, arts and crafts, recipes, and book reviews. So anything that has to do with pretty much living off the grid, what life is like doing that, any tips you may have, things you've done related to building your own home, or maybe having like solar power that's away from the grid, or raising a family off grid, that kind of stuff. So they also do not accept simultaneous submissions. Um, they also say for graphics that photos, drawings, or diagrams should accompany a manuscript whenever possible. And they obviously want that to be high quality and TIFF, JPG, PNG, or GIF format may be attached to the emailed articles. So outside of that, they don't seem to have a specific word count that you have to meet here. But other than that, they'll, they'll mention a few things like in the writing guidelines section of like how to format things if you need to know that part, which obviously you should read. But yeah, if you want to do anything like off-grid living, that would be a good one to check out. You also have a company called eurekastreet.com.au, which means it should be an Australian-based website, but they actually accept submissions of up to 800 words. And they obviously want you to review the guidelines, but they are making, if you are making a poetry submission, please refer to the guidelines on poetry below. So Eureka Street covers a lot of topics that range from politics to the environment. And typically they pay you, as you can see, 
around $200 per article paid for exclusive first publication rights, see payment section below, upon publication and invoice. They will also pay $200 for first publication rights of short fiction and creative nonfiction up to 1,000 words. So they seem to have a little bit of a more broad um, amount of things that they cover here. You see religion, you see arts and culture, international, Australia related, economics, media, education, environment, cartoon, faith doing justice. They have a lot of different categories here. So it's a lot more broad than some of these smaller niche ones I've shown you. But they also have a poetry section, which it looks like pays around $40 or about $50 each. And then outside of that, they just tell you, you know, to send your invoice within three months of getting the article published and a few other things that, you know, you can kind of read through on your own time. But they have all sorts of different things that you can get published on. Again, all sorts of different categories. And use, usually the, uh, the word count is around 800 words, which is actually fairly short. And last but not least, if you happen to live in Alaska and you are a parent, you're raising a family, you can actually submit for alaskaparent.com. It's another company that pays really well for article submissions. So if you're looking at getting something article, some sort of article published here, they pay you 40 to $200 for each article. And also if you do a reprint, so it's not an original, you can get paid 25 to $40 or so. So usually you get paid as well within 30 days after the print date of the publication. So outside of that, they are currently seeking featured stories. So these are 800, 1200 words. Short feature stories are 500 to 800, and then tips are 150 to 600. So again, I don't really need to get too into the weeds with this one. It's anything that has to do with a, a magazine where people talk about what it's like to raise kids and a family in Alaska specifically. So hopefully this was helpful. These are a bunch of different websites that will pay you really well to publish articles and, and also just kind of show you what's out there and what's possible so that maybe you can also Google some more on each niche that you're interested in or maybe look up your own niche by looking at Write For Us pages um, on the internet related to what you know a lot about so that you can maybe start building yourself a side hustle or a writing business on the side. And if you thought this was a helpful video, please click the like button. It really helps me out. It helps me know that this is actually worth covering, maybe even more in the future. And don't forget to leave a comment if you want to ask me a question or suggest something I cover in the future. And I'll see you in the next video.